Let's go to Jonah. The book of Jonah in chapter 1. You know, when they asked Jesus for a sign, he said he was going to give him a sign. He said it was going to be the sign, the same thing of Jonah. Right? He said that he was going to destroy the temple in three days, raise it in representation of what happened to Jonah. Because Jonah is a representation of what we call the Old Testament things that are shadow of things to come. And Jesus was expressing about, because they already knew about the story and the history of what happened to Jonah, and he says, I, this is the sign I'm going to give you exactly what happened to Jonah. Now let's talk about what happened to Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee the Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So was he obedient or disobedient? Disobedient. disobedient? Now here's a man that heard the voice of God. He knew what was right to do and wrong to do. And he chose to go the opposite way. But Jonah arose and to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was brought about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had laid down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came down to him and said, uh, what, are you, what are you doing down here, man? What do you mean you're sleeping, sleep, Mr. Sleeper? What are you doing? <laughs> and you see, we're going through a storm here. I mean, all hell's broke out. We're throwing cargo off. We're screaming to stay alive, and we're praying to our gods. What are you doing down here? And he said, arise and call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Obviously, their gods didn't answer. They said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to the land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood. You got to understand something. This was a man of God. They were thinking about throwing overboard. <laughs> So they prayed to his God and said, Please, when we throw him overboard, don't charge us for it. <laughs> for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Now understand something very important here. <laughs> Jonah was disobedient to God. He knew what he was supposed to do and chose not to do it. Listen. So they threw him in the sea. That was a representation of Jesus on the cross, wasn't it? Amen. When Jesus was on the cross, there's something that happened. He took curses for me and you. Jonah became a curse, caused trouble on the boat. Why? Because of his disobedience. It was causing trouble on that boat. Everybody is being tormented because he became the curse. When they got rid of him, Everything ceased and calmed down. That's exactly what happened to Jesus. Jesus took the curse, didn't he? He took the curse of death, hell, and the grave for me and you. 
and he gave him the sign. And I want to talk tonight about accursed items because it seems one of the things that we just throw aside and neglect and we lose sight of it. I'm going to share with you some testimonies that have happened in my life about accursed items. It's important that we realize God's saying, get your house in order. And accursed items are one of the major things that cause people to stumble and fall. Not only is there accursed items of items, but there are idols that are accursed items, and people can become an accursed item. Does everybody understand that? Where the ship you're on, they're going to eventually throw you off. Would you turn to Joshua chapter 7? Did everybody understand that? Yes. The story of Jonah. Joshua chapter 7. Oh, to God be the glory. Joshua chapter 7. Is everybody there? Would you read this with me, please? But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Kamai, the son of Zabadai, the son of Zarah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now, it was a tribe that took the accursed things, right? But God came against all of them. Now, Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ah, which is beside Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ah. And they returned to Joshua and said to them, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up, and attack Ah. Do not worry all the people there, for the people of Ah are a few. So they saw something that they could take advantage of. I mean, actually, the battle should have been won. There should have been no problem. They didn't need all the people. But see, they didn't realize that they had an accursed item in their camp. So they sent a, a, a military up there, not as many as they needed, because they thought they were just going to wipe it out. It was going to be a simple battle. In verse 4, so about 3,000 men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about six or about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shabron and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes, fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel. And they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. So here's Joshua all freaked out. Man, wait a minute. Lord, you sent us there to battle, but we lost. What is everybody going to think about us? We're supposed to be the great army. You have a God who's the creator of heaven and earth. You're supposed to be with us. What's up? So they were all freaked out. Verse 8. Oh, Lord, what shall we say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us, cut us off, cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Verse 12, read it with me. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither I will be with you any more unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Now, this is powerful. Yes. Powerful. He says in verse 13, he says, Get up and sanctify the people. In other words, separate yourself and sanctify yourselves for tomorrow because thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. And in the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. When they found the accursed things in the camp, 
they not only killed the family, the children, the livestock, and anything associated with that family. Does everybody understand it? Now, an accursed item, and we'll talk about some of these tonight, accursed items draw demonic activity. Where there's an accursed item, the devil has the go-ahead to do what he wants to do. Does everybody understand that? Is everybody with me? Where there's an accursed item, the devil has access to you, your household, your family, your finances, your health, and your future. Does everybody got it? Okay. The one thing it said is, is you can't stand against that, your enemy. Man, you can do all the fasting and praying, all the casting out, all the praying in the spirit, and you're going to lose the battle. If you can do all the two touching and agreeing and everything else, you won't win. You cannot stand against your enemy. Does everybody understand that? Amen. Okay. Now, I'm going to share a couple quick things. I've had experiences over and over with accursed items, especially when I was a baby in Christ. Man, you know, I, I was hungry for God, and my wife was in New Age. She was in the New Age movement. And, well, she wasn't my wife then. <laughs> but she had sent me books and all kinds of stuff, and they were very colorful, and, man, they sounded great. I thought, whoa, this is powerful stuff. You know, but I found myself struggling in all kinds of areas. In fact, one time... I was driving down the road and I said, Lord, would you please send someone to teach me how to read your word? And there was a car broke down on the side of the road. And I looked and I saw a Bible on the dashboard. So I pulled over and there was a woman whose transmission was messed up. And she looked at me and said, what happened to you recently? I thought, well, what do you mean? I said, I had an encounter with the Lord a few, a few weeks ago. She said, yes, and God has sent me to teach you how to read the Bible. I said, whoa. <laughs> so she said, let's go to your house, because she was right around the corner, and let me call my husband so that we can get the car. So she came to the house. She called her husband and told her what was what. And she said, hey, I'm going to pray for you and everything. She goes, do you know what a point of contact is? I said, no. I mean, my thought was contact, the propeller going, from the plane taking off, you know. She goes, no, a point of contact is something that you wear that, um, you know, God can touch you. Oh, I said, really? She said, yes. Yeah. She says, here's a bracelet. She gives me this bracelet that she was wearing. It had turquoise in it and had an S on it. And I didn't think, you know, what was what. And, and so I began to, I went to morning prayer because I was involved in a church and that the Lord just put me in. And I was going to morning prayer and I'd be praying and I'd look down there and I'd say, man, that's from that bracelet. And I'd pick up pieces of turquoise from this bracelet. But I, had, I started struggling. I started struggling. I'm going, man, what's going on? Why, what happened, Lord? Where's the presence that I know? Because I, I used to be able to see things better, and, and I found myself struggling. And this woman would call me at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock at night and say, I know you're struggling. And I'd, come on, I want to pray with you. Let's get together. And she would come over, and we would pray, and she would quote scriptures and pray in the spirit and do all kinds of stuff and, 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 and I was struggling terribly and so finally one day I said Lord I can't take this any longer well one day she came over and she came to pray with me she put her hand on my leg and I said that's it something right here and she knew that I was communicating with my ex-wife who was in New Mexico and she was trying to bring division sometimes so certain things began to manifest. So I went to the, my bedroom and I cried out to God. I said, Lord, tell me what's what. And I opened the Bible and the Bible turned and the page turned. And it brought me and it said, be weary of the woman with the eyelashes and the silver and this bracelet with silver. And I didn't get it yet. And I went out again. I said, Lord, you got to show me what's what. I shut the Bible and I opened it and went right back to the same scripture. And I'm sitting there going, Whoa, the bracelet. I pulled that bracelet off and threw it, and I got totally set free. Praise God. Totally set free. My roommate came home, and we took him through and threw him down the someplace. I don't know. <laughs> Sewer. That's where we threw him. But I struggled because that was an accursed item. See, she was a high priestess for Satan in disguise. She knew that I'd just come to the Lord because I'd served Satan for so many years. He didn't want to lose me. 
she showed up with her sisters one time and all kinds of stuff. And they all portrayed to be right with God. They invited me to come to a funeral and the Lord said, don't you go nowhere with them. All kinds of stuff. See, with this accursed item, I just want to, I'm going to tell you more stuff about accursed items tonight. Okay? Hallelujah. Go to Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Do, do, do to run me. Everybody all right? Yeah. I got a lot of testimonies for you tonight about a cursed yeah. item. Yeah. And Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 21. Let's read this together, please. 21. Is everybody there? Yeah. Let's read it. You shall not be terrified of them, for the Lord your God, the great and awesome God, is among you. And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once, lest the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you and will inflict defeat upon them until they are all destroyed. And he will deliver their kings into your hand and you will destroy their name from under heaven. No one will shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. You shall burn the carved image of their God with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it, and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. Whoa. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Bible is warning us, listen, these accursed items will allow the devil to come in and destroy you. Has everybody got it? Amen. It'll destroy you. Go to Deuteronomy 23. Verse 14. Let's just read it together. For the Lord your God walks into the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. Wow. Our camp, our temple, our places are to be holy. In fact, there's a feast called the Feast of Unleavened, which is the second feast the Jews celebrate. And what they do is they remove all leavened things out of their house. It's a representation of cleaning their house from evil. Amen. Cleaning everything. There are many things that are cursed items. And I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to mention some of them, but I'm not going to go to every scripture there is. Okay. One of the things that's a, an accursed item is tattoos. The Bible says that you and I are not to tattoo ourselves or cut ourselves. And many of us have, and what you need to do is just repent and you break the tattoo. You break the tattoo. You break the curse off. So I'm just sharing that before we go any further. And, and don't let the devil beat you up about something that you did. Amen. Remember, the blood is there. Amen. The blood is there. Now I want to share something with you, and we're going to repeat this again. My repentance allows us to access the curse. It doesn't remove it. Once you've accessed the curse, you must begin to fulfill what you're supposed to do. That's what removes it. Because, see, Jesus came and said, I've come to fulfill the law. Only by him fulfilling remove the curse of death, hell, and the grave. Right. Is everybody with me? Amen. Okay. So yes, your repentance allows you access to the curse, doesn't it? Then you must renounce it and break it and fulfill what you're supposed to do. Go to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Accursed items draw demonic activity. Isn't it amazing how the devil, I mean, you know, I mean, most tattoos you see are demonic out there, you know. I mean, you might see a Jesus tattoo and whatever, but those are a curse too because it's still using something of God. In other words, you can take a blessing and curse it, and I'll show you that. Isaiah 52, 11. Read it with me, 11 and 12. Depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her, be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. you bear the vessels of the Lord? Yes. Amen. For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by the flight. For the Lord will go before you. 
And the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Oh, hallelujah. We don't want to break that protection, do we? Amen. Don't touch anything unclean. Now, there are areas where you can touch unclean things, not only with your hands, but with your ears and with your eyes. Everybody understand that? You can touch an unclean thing with your ears, with your eyes, and with your hands. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 11. You know, you may think, well, man, what things are, are cursed items? I'm going to share a few things off and on, and we'll try and get more, and I'll, I'll share an example. I had a guy call me one time, and uh, he was uh, in another state, and uh, I was praying with him, and the Holy Spirit said to me, there's an accursed item. That's why he's struggling. And uh, I said to him, well, do you, he was struggling with lust and stuff like this. I said, well, do you have any pornography videos or anything like that? Anything? Yeah, well, get rid of them. So uh, he called me back a few days later. He says, man, I'm still struggling. I said, did you get rid of them? He said, yeah, I put them in my basement. I said, no, man. <laughs> no, you got to destroy them. you got to get rid of them. Okay, we got to fulfill, you got to get rid of them. So he got rid of them. And then he called me a few days later and he says, man, I'm still having all kinds of stuff. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that there was an accursed item in his living room. I said, tell me what you see in your living room. And he shared with me that there was an a, a Indian statue. I said, well, what does it represent? He said, well, it was a witch doctor. I said, well, get rid of it. See, these accursed items draw demonic activity. Does everybody understand that? T-shirts can be an accursed item. Clothes. All kinds of things that reference anything that is demonic in any way. Jewelry. I had a girl that gave me a, a, a necklace one time and it, had a cur and it had a cross on it. And I still had to get rid of it. Because it was cursed. It represented the lust from that girl. Is everybody with me? Oh, hallelujah. I had to get rid of pictures. A dragon. I had 25 karat, 24 karat plate. A dragon. I had to bust it. Because what's a dragon represent? Amen. Satan. Even, yeah, even pictures prior to when my wife and I were first married and all kinds of stuff. Things that re represented things of when we were in the world certain things that would affect us. That doesn't mean you got to get rid of every little nook and cranny. There are certain pictures of family and certain things. Yes, but things that will affect you can be an accursed item. And we'll get more into this. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 26. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of your Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, to go after other gods which you have not known. Ooh. To go after other gods which you have not known. Go to Second Corinthians chapter 6. Now, you've got to understand something. The, the, the representation of God's here is anything that you're utilizing that you feel is bringing you strength. Hello? You know how many people wear those crystals? Do you ever see those people with those, uh, what they call them, wind catchers? Dream catchers, and they think they keep demons away, but they actually draw demonic activity. I was driving down the road one day, and the Lord said to me, Stop, there's a yard sale. I stopped this guy at about a six foot dream catcher. And I said to him, man, do you know that this thing is... And he's got all, he's selling all kinds of them. And he was a Bible teacher. Uh, and I said to him, man, you better check with your pastor. And I thought, uh-oh. And if your pastor don't know, you better find another church. Hello. Second Corinthians chapter 6. But he was, he was bragging about how he's teaching Sunday school. And I'm thinking, man, this guy's... And now he's cursed, and he's putting... He's an accursed item, drawing demonic activity, isn't he? Because yeah. a person becomes an accursed item and draws demonic activity. Yeah. In fact, you and I were accursed when we were born, weren't we? Yeah. Man, we drew a lot of demonic activity. Come on. We were Hotel California for the demons. 
Second Corinthians chapter 6. People think it's okay to drink. No. That's why they call it spirits. You ever see the restaurants that say spirits and food? They're not kidding. Demons and food. <laughs> they have happy hour. Two hours later, they're sad. They were deceived. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. And his power is what? Fear. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. Read it with me. And what agreement has the what? The temple of God with idols. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore means if. If you will what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear or reverence to the Lord. Somebody with me. No agreement with idols. Idols, anything between you and God. What can be an idol? Your job, your car, your family hmm. can be an idol. Anything that is between you and God is an idol, and it can become an accursed thing for you. doesn't mean they're cursed. It's cursed for you. Does everybody understand it? Amen. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 58. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 58. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sickness. So listen, I'll sickness and disease is a curse even colds it's all a curse let's go on moreover he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt which is representation of the world right of which you were afraid and they shall cling to you also every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law the Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed even the things that are not written. You shall be left few in number, where, whereas you were as the stars of heaven in multitude, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Oh, hallelujah. See, God is preparing us for the glory that's about to hit. Amen. Just like Ananias and Sapphira, who stood before the apostles, they all they were in a fellowship. And they all agreed to sell all of their land and their goods and turn it all in. So they volunteered, yes, we're going to sell our home and this and we're going to turn it in. Well, when they finally started, went to go turn it in, they decided to keep some for themselves. It wasn't the keeping some for themselves that was the problem. The problem was they lied and they died right in front of them. Boom. One at a time. The husband and the wife both died. Why? Because they lied. Because the glory of God and the power of God was so great then. And fear came around everyone. I'm telling you, we're heading right back to yes. that. They lied and they died. Now, we've got to talk about these plagues and so forth. Now, listen. All sickness is a curse. All of it. No matter what it is, all sickness is a curse. Now, there's three types of curses. And we've got a wonderful teaching called Cursed or Blessed. And I'm not going to try and get into all of that because that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to emphasize on these accursed items tonight. But there's three types of curses. There are inherited curses. They come down the family line. There are self-imposed curses because of disobedience, things that we do. And there are temporary curses. And that's like touching someone that's got a cold or a sickness. And you just touch that curse and you picked it up. Do you understand that? Now, I want to share something that's important. Because the devil... If you remember what he tried to do to Job, he tried to wipe out Job, didn't he? And what, what was trying to happen was the devil was trying to get Job to curse God. 
so he could receive the curse and destroy him. Does everybody got it? Yeah. But Job wouldn't. Job wouldn't curse God because he trusted God no matter what. Even his wife came out and said, man, why don't you curse God and die? Because she knew if he cursed God, he would die. <laughs> See, out of your mouth will bring a curse also. That's why we don't go around saying, hi, I'm an addict. Because I'm not. What you speak is what you get. Amen. You can curse yourself. The devil's waiting for you to say something that he can use on you. That's why my wife says, you say it, you own it. That's why we have to separate ourselves from certain things. But we've got to be careful. Because, first of all, the devil wants to entice us, doesn't he? He entices us to sin or have fellowship with darkness. Once you agree to have fellowship with darkness and you do the act, which is the transgression, okay, a curse comes on you. Once you've done that, the wrath of God or the judgment of God. And how, what does God use to bring judgment? Demonic activity, Satan's kingdom. Does everybody understand that? And sometimes that what we've done as a believer will separate and move the presence of God from us and the protection and devil have access to me and you. See, when the devil tries to put things on you after you've repented, you've got to separate and say, that's not mine. But the devil will try and convince you that it's yours. But you've got to fight to get it off. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. That In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them or serve self, that's another God, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go and to possess. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Now, you see it comes down the family line, doesn't it? That you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give to them. And what's he saying? Don't serve yourself. That's why Jesus always said you must deny yourself. Deny yourself. Go to Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. I had a call one time from a, a wife whose husband was a heroin addict. She had enough. She said, come and get him. <laughs> and I talked with him on the phone. He says, man, I need help. This, that, whatever. His wife was packing up and leaving him in, a, in an apartment that they were living in. She said, I can't live this way any longer. So I went over to the house and I walked in the house and I was, and I was talking with him. And the wife was walking or she went to go pick up a, a son or something. And they had two boys. I was talking with him in the living room, and I saw this huge shadow walk from one room to another. I said, man, who's in that room? Because he said to me, man, I haven't used in a long time. All of a sudden, I was sleeping. It's like somebody came in my body. I got up and took the car and went out. I said, yeah, somebody did come in your body. We went in that room. I said, who, who, who sleeps in this room? We went in the room. The, the, one of the sons slept in that room. We started looking around. All demonic stuff on the walls, pictures, boxes of stuff. He was practicing witchcraft. And they said, well, what do we do? I said, well, you know, first of all, let me get him out of here, and I'll tell you what's what. So anyways, the family, the mother was still with the kids. She chose to stay there for a couple more days, but she wanted him out, so he came here to the ministry. That's when we just first started the ministry. And so she called him. She says, listen, my son has gone crazy. I said, well, you know what you need to do? You need to get rid of all that stuff out of the house. So he was away, so she went for wait for him to go away, and the husband went back home, and her and the husband started cleaning up his room. And he was way across town, and the demons told him what was going on. He come barging in, busted the door down. They had to have, have the police come. He was frantic and demonized. 
So she came and she began to learn and he began to, the husband began to learn and began to take dominion. The child finally surrendered, got delivered, and the family serves the Lord now. Amen. To God be the glory. But they didn't know all of these years. They didn't know. Praise God. Fire 17 and verse 5. Is everybody there? Amen. Praise God. Would you read it with me? Thus says the Lord, Curses the man who trusts in man. Hello? Curses the man who trusts in himself. And makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. And he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes. You know what? Those accursed items always have you miss God. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and a salt land which is not inhabited. It always causes you to be dry. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord, for he shall be like a what? Tree planted by the waters, hallelujah, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaves will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is a deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So you and I, by just working and walking in our own strength, and our own flesh, can become an accursed item. He who trusts in him, if you're trusting in what your ability is at your job, you're trusting in you. Yeah, but it's a gift from the Lord. It's still his. Remember, there's a lot of idols that can come in your life. A lot of idols. Jobs, families, relationships, money. Hey, listen, the Bible says it's the love of money. That's the problem. It's not that we can't have money. It's the love of money. If you love money, that money is an accursed item to you. Because first of all, it's not ours. Amen. Nothing is ours. If God was to say, give up everything, you better be able to. Or else it's an idol to you. Now I want to share a little bit about the anointing. Go to Acts 19. Every accursed item has an anointing. An anointing of the devil. Why? Every accursed item draws demonic activity. Did you ever get around somebody who's always drawing demonic activity on themselves? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Throw them out of the boat. <laughs> 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 Repent, get delivered, or throw them out of the boat. <laughs> Let Jesus take him under. <laughs> Acts chapter 19. In verse 11 and 12, would you read it with me? Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now that's powerful. That's the anointing of the Lord. Now Paul was anointed by the Spirit of God. Paul was walking in the glory of the Lord, that where he would wear aprons and handkerchiefs. You know, people use prayer cloths, right? Well, look at it. If they're not anointed, there ain't nothing going to happen. Now, what was happening, in fact, I'll tell you a little testimony about uh, the anointing. Uh, Shambach, anybody ever heard of Shambach Evangelist? Well, a woman came up to him and said, listen, during the service, he said, she said, would you put this piece of candy in your pocket and give it to me after the service? And he said, what are you, crazy? Anyways, the Lord said, put it in your pocket. So he put it in his pocket. After the service, a woman came up to him, took the candy. Um, about a year later, whatever it was, she showed up at another service of his. She introduced her sister. She says, you probably don't remember me, but I'm the one that gave you the candy. He goes, yes, how could I forget? Anyways, well, she said her sister was in a mental institution, and they couldn't give her anything because she was in a padded room. The only thing she could have was a piece of candy. So she got the piece of candy to her, and she was released within a few days. That demon left her because of the anointing on that item. Hello? And it was over with. Now let me share something else with you. Because the, God has an anointing to remove demonic activity, the devil has an anointing to draw demonic activity. In fact, one time, it was Halloween, and uh, the Lord said to me, I want you to dress up as, a, as Moses. So I uh, said, okay. So I got this sh shawl and this beard, you know, <laughs> let my hair down. And, and he said, now I want you to put Bibles in them and apply the blood of Jesus on them and bless them. So I was thinking, man, I need a staff. So Sister Letha come over. And I said, do you know anybody who's got a staff? She said, yes, my roommate. Or her roommate struggled a lot, was sick a lot, off and on or whatever. She brought me this staff, and the staff was perfect. It was perfect. I was like, yeah, this is a Moses staff. Well, about two feet on the bottom of it, it was painted totally solid blue. So Sister Letha left. I laid that staff down. I went in the kitchen. I walked out. And as I walked out, on the corner of my eye, I saw that staff move like a snake. I thought, wait a minute. 
is my imagination. And it's like, no, I'm not taking no chances. I said, listen, in the name of Jesus, I command you, devil, come out of that staff and leave my house in Jesus' name. I went to the front door and I forgot something because I was going out to clean the car and I went back in the kitchen. I grabbed something. I walked by that staff again and I did it again. And I said, Satan, I told you in the name of Jesus to come out of that staff and leave my house. I walked to my front door, opened the door, and there was a snake right on my front door. Reddish mouth, colorful. And I said, devil, I didn't know about cutting her heads off then. Ooh, I missed that one. <laughs> I never let another one get by. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I got the hose and squirted him and said, I told you to get off my property, and he took off. Sister Letha came to pick up the staff, and I shared with her, I said, hey, look it, you may think this is wild, but I cast this demon out of soap and a snake out of this staff. She said, did it have red mouth and colorful? I said, yes. She goes, well, underneath with painted solid blue is a picture of one. That was an accursed item. Listen, I went to the hospital. I was praying for this woman. She was involved in uh, lesbian activities. She was dying. So I went in and I went, to, I went to go pray for her. She received the Lord. And one of her friends come up. She was carrying this cane. And she must have been one of her associates at one time. Anyway, she went to step over and touch her and said, hey, how you doing? And when she touched her, the woman in the bed began to groan. And she let go. And, and, and she looked at me. I'm standing at the end of the bed. I'm thinking, man, I'm praying for this woman. Keep your paws off of her. And the Lord said to me, you stand at the end of the bed and fold your hands. Fold your arms. I'm going to show you something. So I stood at the end of the bed, folded my arms, and that woman bent over again to touch the woman that was in the bed. And when she touched her, she says, hey, how you doing, baby? And uh, the woman goes, oh! And she let go again. And the Lord said to me, my children are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that woman is a temple of serpents. And when he said that, my eyes opened in the spirit. And there were serpents like she was a cup. And there were serpents out of her. And these serpents were bending over. Every time she touched him, touched that woman, it bit her. That serpent bit her. And she would go, oh! See, people don't realize that those serpents bite you. And they plant corruptible seeds in you. Remember, in the Old Testament, what happened when the Jews were rebellious and disobedient out in the wilderness? What did God do? He manifested serpents and they bit them. Thousands of them died, didn't they? What happened? There was the curse, wasn't it? And then what did he do? He took a serpent. He molded one out of bronze, put a stake in it, representing Jesus. They looked on it and they were delivered and healed. Oh, we're going to hear some more. So this anointing now, the devil has an anointing also that draws a cursed items. When my wife and I go out, I go into a hotel or whatever, I go in there first of all and clean it up. I lay my hands on the bed, I break the curses off, whatever it was used for, I apply the blood of Jesus, that house, that room gets cleaned from head to toe. One time we went in the one place, we, we, op we opened because they had the TV in one of those cabinets, I opened the cabinet and there was a Buddha. Buddha draws demonic activity. And uh, I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe I better just... Uh, call room service and have them pick it up or something. The Lord says, don't you dare. You bust it. <laughs> he says, you bust it. You give it to someone else. The curse will be on you. I said, you got it. <laughs> I busted that thing, put it in the bag, and put it outside the door. <laughs> and that was it. Accursed items. <laughs> Video games, accursed items. All these kids playing. Oh, these video games. Those are accursed items. Pokemon. People watching video. Oh, look at cute E.T. Little kids are looking for E.T. E.T. shows up. But he ain't so friendly. Amen? Amen. A cursed item. Stuffed animals. or certain stuffed animals that kids buy that are cursed items. T-shirts that have Tasmanian devils on it. We had a family bring a kid in one time. I don't know what to do with them. First thing I said, why don't you take off that shirt? It had a Tasmanian devil on it. Certain toys, certain jewelry. Can be a cursed items. You know, those gangster movies, those are cursed items. Horoscopes, you're still reading your horoscope, they're cursed. Cigarettes are a cursed item. Chewing tobacco is an accursed item. Of course, alcohol and drugs. Drugs means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Snakes are cursed items. That's the most cursed animal there is. Certain china and certain things that have been handed down, family lines that have certain logos on them and whatever. Certain things that were used. Look at when somebody blesses us with something, I break it. When we get blessed with something, I pray over it. If I get blessed with a car, I pray over it. I don't care where it's come from. I break the curses off of it so it would be used for God. and not, not be, I don't care what it was used for before. Clothes, whatever it is. Anything you get blessed with, you break the curse off, you give it to God, and you bless it. 
There's a lot of stuff, pornography we know, clothes, books. Listen, there is so much stuff going on. Certain TV programs, kids are demonized for watching horror flicks. The commercials alone are demonic. The New Age movement is very, very tricky. Like I was sharing with you in the beginning of this tape about my wife, who wasn't my wife yet, who was in the New Age movement, and she gave me a book. I'm telling you, this book, was, man, you, you, you would have thought, man, this book, this book is godly. This book is godly. Man, it tells you all about, whoa, this is powerful. I was having problems. My roommate said, man, you need to get rid of that book. I said, yeah, you need to get rid of your book. I found myself being rebellious. I thought, whoa, what's up? And I, I finally got rid of it and realizing that, you see, Satan comes as an angel of light, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Then one time I, I had this little booklet in my pocket from the same, listen, these New Age people, you know what they, they're doing? It's amazing. They take what is partial truth. You know what they're doing right now? They're storing up. They know, they know that uh, um, tribulation is coming. They know. They've got places all dug out. They're storing up food. If any of you have ever heard of Clara Prophet. I mean, they, this is the New Age movement. You know what they're doing? They're storing guns. They're storing food. They're building places and shelters, thinking they're going to make it through the tribulation. You know what they are? They're bound by fear. And that's what the devil does. Yep. He binds them by fear because he comes as an angel light. He'll take a partial truth. He'll take a truth. But behind it is all other stuff. Right. Bringing fear. See, I thought that was all about God. When I began to read this book, I said, man, this is powerful stuff. Whoa, this is wonderful stuff. I mean, it was so, it sounded so real and so holy and so pure, but it was garbage. It was a lie. It was a lie. One day I went into a, 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 a place to get uh, something. Uh, it was a music place or something. I picked up something that, and I looked at it. I almost threw up. I had to drop it because it was so demonic. It, almost, it stirred me up. I almost threw up. I dropped it right there. And I said, okay, Lord, and Lord said, don't you pick that stuff up again and don't touch it. And he said to me, wash yourself with the blood. I, I used to walk in and out of places going, the blood, the blood, the blood. <laughs> I was one of those crazy babies that just got born again. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, I'm going to try and get through this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. In verse 3, would you read it with me? But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now remember the serpent deceives, doesn't he? Amen. Good. I'll go to verse 12. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that it may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are. Hello? Just as we are. In other words, as disciples of Christ, as apostles and servants of the Lord, in things which they boast, for such as false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Let me tell you something. In that New Age movement, that's what they're trying to do. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. That's the difference between associating with the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. These things are cursed items. People spend days on computers. There's a lot of cursed items on computers. Man, the devil can reach many, many places to the computer, can he? Many, many places. I'm telling you, when I first got saved and all of these things of... Uh, and my roommate was a, a computer whiz and all this other stuff. And, man, I used to search all kinds of stuff. And there were things that God would tell me, even though it sounded right and looked good, he'd say, don't go there. Don't do it. That's not me. That's not me. Amen? Amen. Satan deceives. Greatest weapon is deception. His power is fear. A little truth and knowledge. New age. Self-survival. Self-survival is what the new age puts out. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of Christ to feed you, protect you. Amen? Amen. And supply all of your needs. They always promote violence and not even know it. Go to James chapter 1. These are accursed things. Remember, anything accursed promotes witchcraft.
James chapter 1. In verse 12, it says what? Blessed is the man who what? Endures, Endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will what? Receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. You know, when a cursed item will cause desires and entice you. Why? Because that serpent is there. Mm -hmm. Then when a desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when it is full grown, it brings forth what? Death. Death. Death because a curse produces what? Death. It produces destruction, doesn't it? See, when the cursed items, what we do is when we mess with a cursed item, the devil is on you to kill you steal and destroy is everybody with me Amen. and anyone near you and ties comes from accursed items the serpent or the snake you know the bible tells us that um oh let's go a little bit further here. Ooh, praise god go to verse uh 16. do not be deceived my beloved brethren every good gift and every precious gift is from above comes down from the father of life with whom there is no variation or shadow of his turning. Now listen, even though you may be blessed with something, hello, we know that all good gifts come from the Father, but you know good gifts come from self too, don't they? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creation, creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and wickedness of overflow and receive with the meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. The implanted word able to save your souls. Be what? Doers, Doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. That's why you got to know the word and do it. Amen. There's a lot of shortcut books out there you got to be careful of. Oh, here's the lost... Here's the lost, um, what was it? The lost runnings of Jesus. Don't read them. They're alive. There isn't anything lost. Whatever the Lord wants us to have is already given. Amen. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 2. Now there are archives of our forefathers that have been written, which are true of their experiences. But when people started saying, oh, the lost this, the lost that, you're, they're lost. <laughs> they're deceived by familiar spirits, seducing and hindering spirits, spirit of new age. Malachi chapter 2, and verse 1, 1 through 9. Read it with me. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. Does how many know that you're a priest and a priestess? Amen. And that's in Revelation 1, verses 5 and 6, and I'm not going there. <laughs> but I'm telling you where it is. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, the Bible says that you are called to be a priest and a warrior. Amen. Okay. Amen. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you. Hello? I will curse your blessings. Now listen, we just said that every good gift comes from the Father, doesn't it? How many of y'all been blessed with something? Amen. If it becomes an idol to you, it becomes a curse. Some people get a car. They spend more money, more time on that car than they do with God. It becomes a curse now. Everybody got it? Anything that comes between you and God is a curse. That blessing that was a blessing has now just become cursed. Is everybody all right? And what happens? That product now draws demonic activity to get to you. Come on, it says it right here. I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your what? Blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you did not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants. I will spread refuge on your faces. I will refuse... Uh, the refuge of your solemn feast, I will take you away with it. And one will take you away with it. Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you. My covenant with Levi might may continue. 
says the Lord of hosts, my covenant was with him, one of life and peace. I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned many away from iniquity. These are priests. This is what you and I are called to be. Amen. For the lips of a priest should speak knowledge, not deceit, Amen. not cursing. Amen. Should speak knowledge and truth. And people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. Amen. But you have departed from the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi says the Lord of hosts, therefore also I have made you a contemptible and base before all people because you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in the law. A curse items, phones, TVs, they can all become, a, that were a blessing, are now a curse. What else? <laughs> Let's go to Genesis 3. Is everybody all right? Amen. Genesis chapter 3. Anything that prevents the will of God to manifest in your life that is hindering you from walking in the will of God is accursed. Has everybody got it? Some of us had to give up some relationships to get right. Don't go back where God's delivered you from. Hallelujah. Let Him establish it, not you. Genesis chapter 3. Is everybody there? Good. In verse uh, 14. Remember, remember Adam and Eve fell, right? Amen. And the Lord, of course, went right after the serpent. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are what? Cursed. Cursed more than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Oh, hallelujah. Let's keep going. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. And toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. For dust you are, and dust you shall return. So we see that the Lord not only cursed the serpent, these are divine curses. Now the serpent was cursed, man was cursed, and the earth was cursed. All of God's creation was cursed. That's why Jesus had to come. Now Jesus came to take the curse of death, hell, and the grave. The rest you and I break ourselves from. So everybody got it? That's why he said, I come to give you a sword. Or when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you'd be instantly delivered, healed, filled, and everything else. But that doesn't happen all the time, does it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Divine curse of the things come to an end. The curse always brings an end, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. Remember, that curse is still here, isn't it? Do you understand that you and I live in a cursed world, Amen. but we're delivered from the curse? Amen. As long as we're not, we're associating with it hallelujah. and touching it, coming out of it. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Curse is always leading to the devil, doesn't it? It allows the devil access to us. So creation is cursed. Go to Romans 8. Romans 8. Remember, Jesus walked by the fig tree, didn't he? What did he do? He cursed it what he spoke, didn't he? And it died. Hallelujah. And see, these curses also, listen, there are corruptible seeds that carry a curse. That's what the devil tries to empower and pardon us. Corruptible seeds. And in Romans chapter 8, in verse um, 
18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to compare with the glory which shall be revealed in us or in me. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Why are they waiting? Because they're under a curse. They're corrupt. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the what? Bondage of corruption. Why? Because it's cursed. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Why? Because your flesh is cursed. Yeah. Amen. It's the seed of the serpent. Ooh. That's why you must be led by the Spirit to keep it crucified. That serpent must be crucified. Yeah. Just like what Jesus showed with the bronze serpent must be crucified. Jesus hung on the cross to be crucified for our flesh. If you're not being led by the Spirit, your flesh is taking dominion over you and the curse is being activated in your life. Hello? Hello. Oh, glory to the Lamb. 1 Corinthians 15. People wonder why they struggle and they have a hard time. Because a serpent... The seed of the serpent is your flesh. Amen? Amen. So we got to keep him crucified. Yes. First Corinthians 15. Oh, we're all waiting for a new body. Glory. No one says you're never going to go through no temptation. Temptations around the corner every time. Temptation is almost available at every thought around the corner at almost every sight you're in a cursed world but you're to be the light of the world Hallelujah. oh glory verse 49 and as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the unheavenly man now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does what corruption inherit incorruption Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that what? It is written, death is swallowed up. Why? Because a curse brings what? Destruction and death. Then it's over with. Amen? Oh, glory. So we're waiting for the fullness of our redemption, aren't we? We're waiting to shed this fleshed, cursed flesh of ours. So you must be led by the Spirit. You can't touch. Look at music. Look how much music has affected people. Man, you better be careful the music you listen to. That contemporary music will keep you out of God's presence. That's why it's called temporary, contemporary. You want to walk in the eternal realm, not the temporary realm. Amen. You want to walk in the Holy of Holies. How many times do you need to hear the message that you need Jesus? Now go in the Holy of Holies and get them. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Malachi 3. Yeah. Gangster rap, I don't care if it's Christian or not, don't listen to it. Amen. It's a lie. Believe me, there's a lot of Christian bands out there, supposedly Christian, that are being promoted by secular groups, secular organizations, collecting the money. There's a lot of Christian information out there. Collecting money, but if you really knew who was behind it, and many seem to be righteous ministers, but they're not. They walk in the spirit of error. They bring confusion and fear. 
Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? He says, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And then he'll what? He'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, he'll protect your finances. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 8, would you read it with me? Yeah. For he who sows to his flesh will the flesh reap corruption. Now do you understand it? Yeah. Why? Because you're sowing in the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. And you're going to reap corruption. And he who sows to the spirit will reap everlasting life. Amen? Does everybody see it? Good. Get it. Reap corruption. See, when you sow to the flesh, you reap a curse. Hello? Yeah. Remember, repentance brings us access to the curse. Fulfillment removes it. Yeah. So when God has asked you to do something and you chose not to, it brings a curse, doesn't it? Yeah. Amen? So when you repent, it doesn't mean you go back to the same thing. It means you get up and you do what God told you from the beginning yeah. to fulfill. Right? Yeah. Then the curse is removed. Second Timothy 3. And verse 1 through 7. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people, what? Turn away. Go to six. And for this sort, those are those who creep into ministries and households and take gullible babies in Christ. Women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, they're always learning and getting all of this knowledge, but can't have truth. They're learning all kinds of stuff, but the stuff they're supposed to be learning. Because <laughs> only the Spirit brings truth. Only in the Spirit are you able to have truth. That's it. You can read this Bible cover to cover, memorize every page and every page number, and still go to hell. Because we're to be doers of the Word, not hearers. Doers. I want to close with 2 Peter chapter 2. One time this woman, we went to go, she called us up. She said, would you go pray for my husband? He's in jail. So me and Pastor Scott went to go pray for him in jail. And the Lord said to me, their house needs cleaning up. So I said, listen, your house really needs cleaning up. She said, would you come and clean it? I said, you sure you want us to come and clean it? Well, me and about three guys from the from the discipleship house, when we just had the discipleship house, we went to this house and cleaned it. Man, we were in the attic everywhere. We found all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff, from pornography to dope to guns to videos. And, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And it was some of the stuff I was like, um, do you know, uh, some of the stuff we were turning a little red on, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to expose this to you, but this is a curse, you know. Oh, it is? Yes. But she was very cool about it. And we cleaned up the house. had about three or four big garbage bags full of accursed items. Don't put them in your car. Husband came home. They had a kid. And we kept telling him, listen, man. And he was going to a church. I said, listen, you need more than what you're just going for. That's not the church you're supposed to be going to. And it wasn't about the church, you understand? It's about where you and I have come from. The more things that you and I have done, the devil has more access to us. We've got to know the power of the Spirit of God and have the Holy Ghost bazooka. Amen. Amen. And this guy was trying to fight the devil with a toothpick. 
And I kept telling him, I warned him and his wife, two years later they're divorced. And she has the children. Just because you get freed and delivered doesn't mean you will keep it. Amen. It's our responsibility to keep it. Amen. That's where people are learning and never coming to the truth. You know, one of the worst things that you get says, Bless, blessed is he who takes godly counsel and cursed is him who takes ungodly counsel. Read Psalm 1. It tells you right there. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. But these like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed speak evil of things they what? Do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have heard, they have a heart trained in covetous practices and are what? Are cursed children. Hello. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam and the sons of Bor, who love the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. Now here's another man of God, right? Who chose to go the wrong way. These are wells without waters, clouds carried by the tempest, for whom it is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. When they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Whew. Let me tell you, the devil knows. I mean, he's coming after, look, he doesn't have to go after an unbeliever. He's going after the believer. Amen. Well, they promise them liberty. They themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter and is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns his own vomit, and a sow has washed to her wallowing in the mire. So listen, these accursed items are dangerous. You can't play with them. You can't fool with them. The devil will have access to you. There are certain things that God is trying to bring us to. There's all kinds of religions out there, isn't there? they got all kinds of forms and formulations or whatever. It's not religion that rescues you, nor knowledge. It's your relationship. Amen. 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 It's your relationship. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's the understanding of what we just talked about. This is true knowledge that we need to know. Does everybody understand that? Amen. This is things that we need to know. You must be careful. That's why we check people who come into the houses. We want to make sure they're not carrying a cursed item. Because it will destroy a house. So, here see and do and take dominion yes. father we thank you for your word tonight and lord we ask that you give us great discernment of what we're hearing what we're seeing and what we're speaking establish your kingdom in us and through us and let us be a witness of light for your glory i pray a blessing on each and every one i apply the blood of jesus on the seed that was imparted of this knowledge.